Let's take a look at the numbers. A couple things stand out. 19 double faults for Coco Golf. That ties her career high mark. 60 unforced errors as well would undo her in the three set defeat. What does Coco take away from this match, John? Yeah, I mean, I think the real question is just what to do about these breakdowns. I mean, her, her forehand, it's an open secret. 19 double faults, 11 of them in the decisive set. I had one former player, a high-level player, say, listen, if I were, I would just take off the rest of the season and just work out that serve. I, problem with the double fault, it's not just the points you're giving away, but, but the momentum and the message it's sending to the opponent mentally. I mean... 11 double faults in a decisive set, three in the last game. It's it's really problematic. I credit her for fighting through it. She need only look at Arena Sabalenka to know this is a solvable problem. But I, I would say this is a crisis. I mean, that, that was really hard to watch yesterday. I can't imagine what it was like to go through. It was it was very unfortunate because I know Coco had such high hopes, especially after such a rough summer. So I, I love her attitude where, you know, she doesn't seem like she's in too much of a panic mode. But in order to really fix an issue, First issue is you got to be able to admit it. You got to uh, uh, acknowledge that there is an issue there, which I think there is with the forehand, with the serve, especially in a big moment like this. It shouldn't it shouldn't arise in these giant big moments. We've seen it come and she can overcome it in some of the other matches, but for it to come up in a situation like this where she really needed to call upon it, I think she just needs to go back to the well and and relook at it and how it doesn't come up in these big moments. Perhaps it's a little bit between the ears, perhaps it's a little bit technical. She's been able to get over the line. She's been to two in the world. She's won the U.S. Open. She's a great champion, and this is a very young age for her to be able to even have these conversations that we're having. So it's still all great, but I think it's a good period to kind of take a little bit of time away, perhaps, a few weeks, and, um, and really jump into it. Yeah, I think this is a tough spot to be in because you have Coco Golf. She's a major champion. You know, she's top five in the world. I mean, she has is playing at an incredible level, even with some of the issues, in spite of some of the struggles she has with the double faults, sometimes with the forehand. I think the fact that the double faults come into play a lot of times at the end of games on break points, you know, when it's tight at deuce, when the game is at hand, that is a huge problem versus a double fault that may happen, you know, at 15 love or, or early in games. I think part of that has to do with technique because under pressure, Tension comes into play and, you know, issues with your technique will break down even more. So I think that's part of the a good sign. It isn't all mental because she is one of the toughest players out there. She's one of the best competitors. I think she has to hold on to that and remember that. But there are some tweaks that she can make technically that may help her over the long run. And the fact that she is a major champion, maybe she can step back a little bit and just accept maybe a few losses while she tweaks uh, something that has to do with her technique. But in the end, I think she will get past it and she will be in the winner's circle again at these you know big tournaments definitely all that said props to emma navarro now in the top 10 in the live rankings first ncaa singles champion to reach the quarterfinals at the u.s open